Hello and welcome to Skandio Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me on Instagram as Skandio and I am Skandio Knits as a designer on Ravelry. And Skandio Knits is the name of my Ravelry group, which is the best place to take part in it along with the Skandio Knits community, getting help with patterns and getting in touch and such. This is not a podcast episode, this is a bonus episode. This is like a little nugget in between. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But you've seen the title, you know what we're going to talk about. My sweater pile. I didn't think of a better name. Uh, my pile of sweater. So context is important. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a place to keep my garments. I am not very organised. I just kind of have them all in a pile on top of a cardboard box supported against a wall. It's terrible. When it's summer, I wrap them up carefully in vacuum bags and keep them very safe and protected from all those little icky bugs. But during winter, they're all in heavy rotation and they're just in a pile that I've now placed on, on here that you can't see. And I thought I would just talk you through them. So they're not all the sweaters that I have in possession. I do have some, pe some people. <laughs> I have some people wrapped up under my bed. No, I have some sweaters wrapped up under my bed that I currently don't have in heavy rotation. But I thought I'd show you the ones that are out and about here. It's not much effort for me and it will be interesting for you to hear which of the garments I've made that I actually wear. So, yeah. I don't know at the time of recording this if I'm going to have time to put up a comprehensive list in order of when I'm talking about these garments. So, if I don't, I will be linking to my Ravelry projects and you will be able to find them there. And yes, it's a very long list of projects, a lot of which are not even finished, but I have them organized by type. So you will be able to find the tab for clothes, for shawls, for, you know, that stuff. You will be able to find it, I can guarantee you. So yeah, let's uh, begin. Uh, we can start with what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Aperside sweater by Kiyomin Bergen. Uh, it's from Late Magazine, uh, probably independently published by now, maybe, possibly, I don't know. I think it's been out for almost a year. Uh, it's lovely. I uh, made it in silk mohair from Ainsworth and some Polworth blend something something from Skein Queen. It's non superwash and I love it. And the colour, and it's also festive, and I'm just mm, losing it. I'm sorry. Not sorry. The red is just perfect and I want to give a special shout out to my friend Sylvia of With Cherries on Top 2 for having sewn in the sleeves. She's not however to blame for this weird thing happening here that's me failing at weaving in my hands and making a weird bulk. That's, that's... Yeah, so that's one sweater out of the way. Modified to be knit in the round other than when I went to the armholes obviously in it up. Um, did a bit shorter because it's a crop because I am a crop person. Also, I should not be making too many arm movements because I have just slept a bit funny and it really hurts. And there's no, please no, you know, it, I just have to walk it off. It, it's just one of those things. I don't need to be told anything I need to do. It's just, I. this is a normal thing, but it hurts. Anyway, what's in my sweater pile? Let's start with, oh, hey, you've seen this. I'm literally going to grab which one is on the top and hopefully not on the floor. This is Icelander. It's my design. I have talked about this a lot in the past few episodes. I'm probably not going to go too in depth. It's made in Hillesvog Vilja. Very much lighter, kind of cuter fit than the traditional Icelanders, which I think there's one in the pile as well. I, I can't see it, but it's there. Uh, it is my design. I'm not gonna. It's not all gonna be my designs. So a, a lot of them are, but it's not the theme. Uh, yeah, it's just very. It's got a very cute fit. Kind of cropped, boxy, um, top down. Two construction methods, depending on if you want to do short rows or not. Uh, not doing short rows is obviously easier and is more the traditional way, but if you want to do short rows, you will get a more tapered shoulder fit, which is, I guess, more tailored in a sense. So up to you. But yeah, so just to talk about that. So that's one thing in the pile of sweaters. I, one thing you're going to realise this episode, I don't know how to fold sweaters. Many have tried to show me. <sighs> Next up is Boxy. 
there's still an end. Why, I've worn this a lot. Why are there still ends yet to be woven in? I think it's because I didn't feel like the neckline was tight enough and now I actually quite like it. So I think I'm going to weave in that end properly and decide that this is it. This is boxy. It's got some wrinkles because it's been all wrapped up for a while. Uh, it's made in Yarn Indulgences, which is a Merino Cashmere Nylon blend. Though I will say that for a Merino Cashmere Nylon blend, it has not peeled a lot given how much I have been wearing it. Uh, sure, there's a bit of knobs under the arm. Not a lot. Uh, I have I have like a lot of other things. I have a lot of um, Pokler Merino garments. Uh, like I've got this one other sweater I wore barely, which has a lot of pills. And so for this one to not pill at all, by comparison, colour me impressed. That's pretty cool. Uh, front and back looks a bit different because it's hand dyed and hand painted and everything. So there is some difference that you can barely tell. It's a little bit more blue in the front, I think. A bit more red in the back. Um, I should say, I almost forget this now, but I did machine knit the body. So I did two flat pieces up until the underarm and no, sorry, all the way up to the garter. And then it's the garter where you shape for the neckline. And I did that by hand because it's like a double garter. I have no idea how to do that on the machine. Not my bed anyway. So machine bed. Terminology. Um, so there, the sleeves were done by hand and the neckline was done by hand. It's just the stocking. And even the bottom rib was done by hand. I just got through the stocking on the machine. And I do believe it was my friend Anushka who helped me graft together uh, the side here. Because I just can't be bothered. <laughs> and in the return I did some kitchen stitching for her. Because I much prefer kitchen stitching to... Uh, mattress stitching which is what she did so all together I have a boxy in yarn indulgences merino cashmere nylon I think it's called zed lux sock or something like that it's a long time since I bought this yarn it's like back in 2016 at the knitting and stitching show so it's an old stash that I finally knitted up it, it does happen and I still don't know how to fold sweaters it's, it's all good here um, Magnolia! Oh my god, this thing I wear so much, especially in the like in-between seasons and even in the summer. Um, light woolly cardiad in heathered grey phenol. You can hardly see the flower pattern at the bottom because it's so heathered. So that was a bit of a, a mistake. You can see the nups obviously because I used a sort of particular method of uh, making them pop. Basically what I find is when I knit nups and I come around to the next round after having made it, I get this like loose strand that can't be pulled across the knobs when I knit the next stitch. So it just ends up being there and being loose. So after a while I go back and I look and I take this strand and I pull it out to a big loop. This tightens up the bubble and then I loop that strand around it twice to make the bubble stay and the strand has a purpose and it really does the trick. I, I am making it sound very complicated. It's really not. I have explained it on the podcast before and people seem to have understood what I meant and done it and been very successful with it. So, yeah, pleased with that. I love this card again. I wear it, like I said, a lot. Uh, the Magnolia is meant to be a sweater, but I put in a steek and steeked it and picked up for bottom band. And the general rule is usually picking up two stitches per three rows. You can see your rows here, even though it's quite heathered. And you just pick up two and you skip one. Pick up two and skip one. It's a great way to get an even number of stitches as well. Yeah, that's my Magnolia. I just love this cardigan. Very wearable. One of my wardrobe staples. Um, just make sure you just have a light woolly cardigan. Be it flea cardigan, Magnolia or host. One of those. You will be surprised just how much wear you get out of them, if you are anything like me anyway. Oh, this is not hand This is a thrift store, 100% cashmere sweater. They only had this colour and only this size and it's perfect for me. And 100% cashmere and I think it cost me a couple of £10, like £30 or something. For cashmere, that's ridiculous. So I love this thing. It's so warm and soft. I live in this in the winter. That's, that's why that one's out in rotation so yeah those will be the things that you can't find in my projects obviously if it's not at all knitted by me then yeah no 
such as the store-bought Icelander which is like three times times as big and heavy as my designed and self-knitted Icelander. This is a Dala I think. No it's Yestal. Oh my god I've been saying this Dala. This is Yestal. But they are both owned by House of Jan at this point. Um, so yeah it's huge. Super warm. Kind of works like a coat when I am out and about and wear it. It's kind of one of those things like unisex, which is a bit more meant for men, I'm gonna be real. Uh, you know, traditional sailor sweaters, so they're quite big and bulky. You could probably fit in two... Ah, oh, it's a bit of an exaggeration. They are basically meant to be oversized and I think they're quite lovely. So there. Huge thing. Probably weighs more than a kilo. Store-bought, machine it. And I really like it. And I felt a bit cheeky buying it shortly before finishing my own Icelander project. And I should start calling it Islander, really. That's... I don't know. Okay. So, what's next? Oh, the Klipka dress. Whilst having gripe with the size range, I do think it's a really fabulous dress. I love the book that I got it from with the Icelandic knits. And yeah it took me a while to finish but it is finished i it's mostly just hanging around because they just finished it and haven't found a place to keep it uh haven't actually wore it yet so i don't have much to say about that but i can tell you that i used plutty lopi instead of let lopi so it's the lightest dress you will ever find it's so light and just gorgeous uh I'm not going to say Pleasure Lope is soft, but I will say it is softer than Let Lope in the equivalent colour. So that's us, the Klukka dress. Oh my god, if there's one wardrobe staple above all in, in my wardrobe, it's this shawl. I should probably wash it, honestly. I just like, it's just second nature to put it on, even. I'm just, I live in this shawl. It was a test knitted that I did for Pinneguri and it's, it's perfect. I did it in Loft uh, by Brooklyn Tweed. It's made for that yarn and it is the best roll I've got. I'm never gonna like beat this. It, it, it's just good. Its colour scheme is obviously right up my alley. This is just, it goes with most things in my wardrobe. It's wearable, it's nice and light and soft and I love it. So much so, I actually made a second one, but for some reason I couldn't replicate it. I I don't know what it is. I used the same yarn, same needle size, but it just became bigger and looser. Um, which is weird because my gauge has not loosened up on anything else I've made. It's just been this one. Um, so I have a bigger vintage shawl as well. Same pattern, same yarn, just bigger. Uh, so this one goes around me actually twice. Um, bit more autumnal colour this one and oh my arm <laughs> it's all the way like at the back and every oh god it really hurts I'm gonna try not to like wince too much um that's why you're here right uh <laughs> so there another vintage shawl which is more of an autumn shawl though bigger uh sometimes I leave my house only wearing this I mean I, I'm wearing clothes but like I, it's cold and I'm just wearing like a light wool cotton dress and I put on this and I just feel cozy. Oh, this is also a big wardrobe staple. Big like grab and go, easy to wear, fits everything, goes well with the vintage shawl. Is Siri, which I made in blacker yarn. Um, they're Cornish tin too for their birthday yarn. Everything about this cardigan is perfect. The size, the fact that I loosened up the gauge to fit better the yarn I was using, the color, the fact that it's quite a structured yarn and a structured knit and the... It looks like I've never worn it. Like there's no wear on this. I mean, you can judge for yourself. Does it look like I wear this a lot? I wear this a lot as a bit of I don't know, stuff that's fallen off trees on it, but wouldn't you expect this to have a little bit more nups at this rate? I'm really like looking for it now under the arm. Nothing. This yarn, the fact that Blacker don't do this regularly is a shame because it's such a good yarn. 
I love the pattern as well, although I did modify it a lot because I wanted a race neckline. So I found the the short row plug-in on the uh, project page. It's a, a picture of a pink cardigan. It will say something about short row in the title and you can find a chart where you can use. Just put that in and it that first, essentially. So you can do short rows to race the neck and it, it's perfect. Fits with the rest and just continues naturally on. I put in a little bit of waist shaping, but it's very subtle, so it just doesn't really flare. So the you can see the stitch change, right? It's not a lot, and it's a lot of luck, a little bit of calculation, but a lot of luck that just made this into my go-to jacket, just going out and about. It's just great, oh, yeah. So would recommend, absolutely. Would actually recommend knitting. If you are more of the size large and instead having an 18 stitch gauge and size medium, I'm so happy with it. It did become bigger than the large in some ways. <sighs> I've got no complaints. So, oh, another pattern of mine. Ease <sighs> there. Don't stretch your arm, Ellie. This is also a bit crunch scrunched up because it's been wrapped up. Uh, it's big. It's not as big as it was in that first time started to design it but it is big and it's meant to be it's cozy it's just a sweater hug that's what I call all my sweaters it's one of those you know one of those cuddle up in I think it's meant to be this way <laughs> there are considerable short row shaping in this pattern to make it rise up the neck and it's just yeah big and I'm not gonna say boxy it's more of a yeah it's a bit boxy it's a little so I could actually haven't blocked out the rib, which is awful to admit after it's been published, but I cast off the rib as I was on my way to drop off the sweater um, for Blathergarn. So there's, there's that. But yeah, I'm really, really proud of this design. Uh, and the chart is actually uh, from one of the first books ever about Norwegian knitting. And it's, I, I found it quite cool that I managed to put it on this yoke here. It's really hard because it's a big chart repeat and incorporating increasing into it is it's, uh, one of those things that's really challenged me as a designer. And yeah, the whole thing is made out of phenol and undyed phenol is so soft. I just wanted to have these colors because I just like grace, but oh my God, it's like kittens and lambs and puppies. I'm just, oh, it's so soft. Next up, I, Bring the Skog, I think it's called. Sorry, it's designed by Leanna Tusty. Uh, she's a Norwegian designer. She's done a lot of these really cute linen tops. These are just simple top-down yokes with a nice spot kind of socket net body. She does put a lot of shaping into hers, but I just decided to opt out and just do a very straight silhouette because wearing these on hotter days, I'm not going to want to wear anything clingy personally. So this went with this. It's made in the Kalinka linen yarn, which is lovely and I would definitely work with it again. Yes, it's like straw to begin with, but then it just gets so soft. Even if it's like I had to frog and go back, it was so softer the second time around. And the yoke is so much softer than the hem just because it was like just hanging off my project for a long time. So it it's like leather. Just the more you deal with it, the more softer and elastic it kind of becomes and oh this is blowing up but yeah love the color shocker and i look forward to wear this when it gets really hot although obviously i don't look forward to it getting really hot because i am me <laughs> another design by mine is the whoa sword of shawl kind of cleverly named because all the patterns in my summer collection had something to do with sword the sun but sword means solstice meaning you can wear it any any solstice this time of year or the summer so winter solstice is the, near this time of year so it is this time of year uh so i still wear it obviously it's a uh, kind of like a scarf shawl I, I i just wear this a lot and it goes around one way or twice whatever you prefer i kind of tend to wear it like this actually this is kind of my going out and about look yeah it's made in Snalden four ply. It's their kind of fingering yarn uh, from the Faroese Islands. And 
It's a very simple knit from corner to corner. Even though it's part of the, the summer collection, you can actually get it as a single pattern and it always has been available as a single pattern in case you just wanted the shawl. I am really, really pleased with it. It's a very quick knit. I used very big needles. I think if I was going to do another one, I'd actually maybe increase more stitches here just for a little bit more depth. Uh, I'm not like feeling like I need it. It's got actually perfect depth. I just like a bit of extra, you know. The depth is actually really good. Like I said, it's quite quite wearable. Uh, like a wrap, like a scarf, like a shawl. It does a lot of things. Yes, Ducot. This is made in Just Wool by La Mia by Hobium Yarn. So they sent me this yarn for free and I just wanted to do a simple raglan. And as it turns out, Kate Davies published a very simple raglan pattern. So that's, that's this. Color is right up my alley and I have worn this so much. It's so soft. This is recycled wool. So it feels like cotton because it's already been worn so much. It's to soften up to the max. Um, there is some proneness for pilling, but it's not the ugly kind of pill that makes you worry about the sustainability of the, the fabric. It's just those little very light knobs. I'm not bothered by them and they would be very easy to de peel without damaging the fabric. I just haven't gotten around to it um so that's that it's got a slightly deep yolk not too much i've certainly seen deeper yolks so oh, i just love this i've worn it a lot like i say i love it would definitely knit with this again i love the sweater i might even do another one of those because it's i mean it's a boxy crop raglan you can't go wrong with that in my book so and i do love kate davis's designs and all in all love this thing color is perfect shocker yeah oh god that's a pile isn't it? it's gonna fall down anyway oh oh my god oh my arm oh, oh it'll be fine it's fine uh next up is stonewood this is also my design you will notice the theme here i failed to wrap up my own designs and put them away i guess i like to have them around you know a little bit of an incentive to actually wear them and get to know my own designs that's kind of you know you need to test your product and i do make my designs for me i always make them my size so i can model them because i work for myself for free <laughs> so yeah it's got a bit of waist shaping as you can see here it's a chunky weight yoke uh using vumps it's really well. I wore it at the Oslo Knitting Festival and I didn't want to take it off even though I was supposed to keep it secret. Uh, simple, very simple. One of my simplest yoke patterns I think. In hindsight I actually wish I'd done one size bigger both for being maybe a size bigger and also just I think it's more comfortable. I like looser fitting garments now than when I started this process and also the chunk of the chunky yarn actually takes away some of the ease because if you think about it as a, as a, a 3D object that goes around you uh, as a bit of a layer inside of the circumference that is the thickness of the fabric and I have started to take things like that into account more lately uh, but I'm still really pleased with it. Look at that! Look at it. It's just like... <sighs> I charted this myself. A lot of the times I take you know, great pride and care into choosing traditional charts and so I can sort of with, you know, hand on my heart to say that they are traditional. Whereas in other times I really try to go, you know, complete freestyle and chart out something myself and I did that with this and it just makes me very happy. So, and obviously colour scheme, it's, it's very much me. And here's the host! It's a little bit wrinkled as well because it's been at the bottom of this pile for some reason. Though I do like to wear this a lot. It's I I made this completely just to like serve my my needs really, uh, just having that light woolly cardigan that I love to wear. Knitting up a very old sweater quantity of Navia Duo, though vinyl would certainly be a good substitute, as would Usk, and it's very nice, isn't it? I mean, can I say that? I can say that. I am so chuffed with the fit. I this is one of my most pride, prided uh, designs. Don't have much else to say about it. If you like sneaking, 
and if you don't it's not very hard to modify in fact um yeah that's that's that is yeah definitely one of my designs that i would also say is a wardrobe staple in my wardrobe in addition to being some uh don't fall i have a massive pile on my table now try not to make it tip over but it's just imagine this this <laughs> thing coming over me oh don't do that with your arm ellie oh no it's falling over damn it okay i'm gonna put it on the floor bear with me i'm just gonna can we just make this the main photo is my face in it okay <laughs> Oh god, why? Oh, you thought you were done? No, that was half of it. We're not done. I need a place to organise my knits. Desperately. More than one room would suffice. I, uh, living... I'm turning 30, it's becoming a bit much to... It's becoming a bit little to only have one room for everything that is my life. Sleeping, working, knitting, laundry knitting machine, hanging out, having visitors, storing my knitwear. <sighs> one day, one day. Anyway, uh, Nur Bakan, don't do that with your arm, Ali. <laughs> this is knit out of Rauwerk yarn, sport weight, Bavarian merino, looking very red on the camera. It's more of a raspberry red, it's kind of crimsony. A uh, little bit festive in the look, and certainly in the photo shoot I did at Leiden Hall Market, which is like kind of the leaky cauldron of London. Um, but yeah, you can wear this any time of year. I would love to make one in navy blue. Oh yeah, that's an idea. Someone do that. Uh, <laughs> simple design, I'm very proud of it. Uh, it's kind of my default how I would do a top down yoke cardigan with no faff, like I say. It's just kind of the go-to construction of mine if I am if I get to decide uh, so that I think is fairly quickly becoming a wardrobe staple it's just off the needles by finding myself gravitating to it a lot and it's obviously my style and my color so shocker uh, yeah oh this is exciting I don't think I've shown you guys this this is the sweater I bought when I found it was on half price in the K Davies shop because I wanted it since it was full price, which is her machine knit, set to start sweater yoke in JC Rennie yarn. I mean, yes, please and thank you, half price, awesome. So I ordered that without hesitation, really. <laughs> it's so nice and light being in JC Rennie, which is a wonderful, affordable and fine yarn, very similar to Whole Super Soft. I'm gonna say I actually prefer it to Whole Super Soft. It's kind of the original super soft, this yarn. And it, it fluffs up a little bit more than Holst. Um, Holst already fluffs up pretty well, so I mean, it's just like a relative thing. They're all pretty good. Uh, I love this, I should wear it more. Um, obviously people will think I've knitted it because it could be mistaken for hand knit, uh, but it's not. It is a machine knit Scottish take on Satisdor. This one I absolutely love and it's been worn, one of my most worn items that I wear a lot at home. I held Pickles Merino Tweed double, uh, Merino Tweed from, yeah, from Pickles, that's just what I said, <laughs> to make the improv sweater by Karen Templer. And this is a pattern that's really more like a recipe on her blog. I uh, could find that through the projects. And I guess the only thing I would have done in hindsight is because you're calculating the whole cast on thing based on your gauge, the yarn weight, and the width of the back of the neck. And I wish I had just written 20 centimeters, but instead I wrote 16. I've since learned that 20 is a very good standard across sizes, but I went with 16. So there's a little bit of a snug, ne snug ne neck opening. Oh my God, words help. Uh, I still really like it. I'm very happy with it. The fit is great. The colors are awesome. Wow, that's blowing out. Let's never use auto ISO again. I love it. I just, yeah, perfect fit. It's got a little split hem going on there. Uh, I didn't look at the pattern after I'd done the neckline, honestly. Just wing it from there on. It's it's an improv sweater. You improvise it. Raglins are so simple. I don't think you need to have done more than one raglan to be able to wing one yourself. 
Uh, so I might do another one of these. I, I really like it and it's soft being a non super wash merino. Two single ply strands held together which has given it a lot of good form and structure and it, yeah it's a go-to cozy sweater of mine. Then we've got Utra. This is my design. You may have seen it. It's quite a new one in Navia Duo. Simple cropped boxy. You can obviously adjust for length. That's with all my patterns. Top down with short rows and steaked armholes. Not steaked neckline because I found a way to shape it with short rows. So it's kind of like a, a lowered boat neck so you don't like have that boat neck suffocation. Uh, you can do a wider boat neck as well. I put an adjustment that I can make it up, up this wide, I think. Something like that. It has been worn quite a bit. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to put that away just yet. No. What's it got there? This, the beast, is heavy. And it's my coat. It's my coat again. I still haven't sewn on buttons, even though it's been a year since I finished it, because I am that kind of person. It's already plenty hot, so you never really need to. This is what it looks like. I am crazy proud of this thing. I mostly just did it to kind of prove to myself that I could design such a thing. And it has become a little bit of a hit. I think it's a little bit one of a kind on Ravelry. It's not done a lot these massive cardigan beasts that used to be quite a staple in most Norwegians wardrobe back in the day when this was people's coach and they were been a lot tighter than this I have had some people I go oh that's a tight gauge for a DK weight yarn I'm like no not in Norway it's not that's how they loosened it up to be it used to be tighter even so it's, it's like a whole different world now we knit things so loosely comparatively yeah I'm also really proud of this mid chart here. Uh, it's a heavily modified traditional chart that was a lot different. Uh, so yeah, just course of kofta. That's fine. Anyway, oh, this is fun. This is dotted rays, which is more like a dotted snake because my row gauge is just super floppy. So it's more like a. This is why I don't wear it a lot, unfortunately, because it's like it doesn't have all that. I mean, it's really, it's, a, it's really cute. Isn't it? I do, I should wear it more. Just tie a knot here, braids out. Yeah, I should wear this more because it's a beautiful Cormo yarn that I bought from Brooklyn General in Brooklyn. I hope to go back there soon. It's so soft, it's so soft. I've been gushing over these two skeins for eons and I finally decided I was gonna do a very loose gauge dotted race. You will probably have seen Dotted Race by Stephen West a lot. I know that it's quite a big shawl, whereas if you do non super wash in garter, it tends to become quite a short row gauge. So it's, uh, that's why I call it the Dotted Snake. <laughs> it just never got that depth. I, maybe I should try to stretch block it, but I honestly think it's just gonna pull up again. So it's just how it is. It's, for someone who is not too keen on crescent shapes for this reason, that was maybe not the best decision for this pres precious yarn. But it's what I did. And it is really comfy. And it is very wearable. And it was a ball to knit. It's such a fun pattern. Stephen West's patterns are often very fun. Uh, I even knit them more than I wear them. Like I'm just like, oh, this is so much fun. I'm just going to cast them once. It's, it's going to be great. And then I find I don't wear these super wash shawls a lot. But this one in Cormo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. I wore it a lot when I just finished it. And I just finished it in a week. So yeah. More details on Ravelry I think there should be. Then we have loosening. I am actually working on a second loosening but I just never got around to it. Um, bright yellow yarn from Vadbit. It's their Vernul which is spun at Hillesborg. I am stupid proud of this design. It's done fairly well on Ravelry and I think it's also one of those one of a kind kind of shawls that you don't find that many woolly woolly shawls on Ravelry. Not as many as I would like anyway. It would look a little bit better here if I hadn't messed up the cast on because I ended up picking up the cast on and rebinding off. Uh, but I have since put a much more elastic cast on in the pattern so um, but if you're really worried about that, I mean, you can just do a provisional cast on and you just deal with the bind off later. Because this is a bottom-up shawl, 
which I thought people would be very hesitant about, but people love that. I say people, like everyone thinks the same. I don't know. I had a lot of positive feedback about it, is what I'm trying to say. And this yellow is everything. I mean, I just I just think about tea doodles. And the little black skirt, which has considerable more nups than last time you guys saw it. I am, again, hopelessly proud of this design. It very rarely that I wouldn't change a thing with something I have finished but this thing I wouldn't change a thing I am so happy with how it turned out the the, the hem you know with the elastics inside the folded hem at the edge of the skirt the rate that it increases the length of it it's just exactly what I wanted it's what all my skirts in my wardrobe are like um, except now I have a hand knitted one and yeah but it has pilled a lot um mostly i think down to the the <laughs> amount that i worn it and that's only to be expected so yeah and it i mean two navio duo garments right here they go really well together and i will admit i wear them together quite a bit and i do think i wore them together in the photo shoot i did off of the ultra sweater <sighs> we are down to three items guys are you ready? Are you ready? Um, this is Polworth, which I haven't woven in the ends because I was not very happy with it when I was done. It's in the beautiful Steinfine wool by the Little Grey Sheep and it's designed by Isolde Teague, who I honestly trust so much when it comes to construction. Like she's just never going to do a simple raglan without really putting her head into how it's shaped for the body. Uh, unfortunately, and I don't know why, the torso of this is way too big whereas the body fits quite nicely and the sleeves are quite fitted so I get this weird loose torso thing and then it's quite well fitted here it's just a bit odd on me and I think maybe I am it, it could be graded for people with bigger shoulders for their size than I am because I am more pear shaped if that's possible it could also be that I am off in raw gauge which I still haven't mustered the courage to try and find out it's entirely possible and but I the reason I had woven in the ends I thought I might change things to it because I've not been happy with the neckline it's been quite floppy having said that I then put it on the other day and I'm like what am I talking about if it's really well like yeah it's loose around here and all that but the neckline being floppy it still sits really well it doesn't do the stand up and flop over anymore I don't know what happened if I just had accidentally wrapped it up in a really nice way in the in the vacuum bag because now it's it's really quite nice to wear so i wouldn't change it i don't think i don't think it's worth it i think it's good enough um and i love the yarn but after hardly one day of wear this is the underarm i'd barely put it on before it looked like this and i've never experienced anything like it so before we have like a big cry of outrage at this lovely lovely yarn that pills like nobody's business this is serious pilling. This is like, whoa. Um, I think the Steinfine wool is related to Falkland Merino. I haven't looked that up, but that's my suspicion that it's a breed based on that. And that has a tendency to behave in the same manner, if you can see that. Uh, are you getting a focus? Are we No? No? Okay, yeah. You get the idea. Lots of pills under the arm. What I've heard about Folklore Merino is while it pills awfully, after you give it a proper, proper deep peel, use a cashmere comb or a gleaner or something, it will pill no more and it'll be very soft and lovely. That's what I've been told. It's not been my experience. I've not had a chance to find out. Um, but I know Maya up and it with attitude just got this beautiful um, brioche shawl in stark black and white contrast in Folklore Marina out of John Arben, which is where this is spun. And she said it pilled so bad in the beginning and then she depilled it and it's never pilled again. And you would know with such a high contrast brioche, you know, white and black, you would see the pills of the black immediately if it did and it hasn't. It looks really pristine. So, and it, she says she wears it a lot. So I think I'm not too worried. I'm gonna just wear it and when it looks awful I will get my cashmere comb out. And we'll see we'll see what the verdict is then. I do really like this 
obviously the color is immaculate. I've been drooling over this a lot before I finally caved in. I quite like the length of the body and the fit. It just kind of rests on top of my hips. It's a bit longer than my usuals, but it did look really good when I put it on. And the fact that the rib doesn't cling too much, being brioche, actually wasn't that bad in the end. I was worried about that first, but yeah, not as as much structure as maybe I would have predicted, but it's, it's fine. And oh so lovely. So suddenly this thing has just made its way right into my wardrobe after a lot of hesitations and not feeling like I was uh, happy with the outcome. I now am and it's great. And it's just because I, I was crazy about the sweater quantity and the pattern. It's the Polworth pattern, if I didn't say that. And I am really, really keen on that construction with this more kind of shaped raglan, which is something I've been dabbling in as well, not from that pattern, but just generally thinking about if it's a bottom up, which is what I'm working on, spoiler, <laughs> uh, to decrease more for the body once you're up here, but finish decreasing for the sleeves at that point. It's kind of what I'm working on. We'll see how that works out, but yeah. This is Tenya. Tenya by Caitlin Hunter. The I was going to say the only Caitlin Hunter I've done. That's not true. I've done Birkin. I never wore Birkin because it did not fit my shoulders. But Tenya fits like a wonder. Although it's been heavily modified because I, after doing... Well, <laughs> I should start from the beginning. I used Volmeiser lace, which is lace. Arguably light fingering, but definitely too loose to be in the loose gauge that the pattern is made for. Caitlin Hunter likes a very loose gauge. I don't always, ne definitely not for superwash, I tend to not want to do that. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to do a very big size on much smaller needles. <laughs> I still use bigger needles than Caitlin, but I still got a much tighter gauge and thus a smaller size. So the details are a lot finer on the lace here than maybe the other tenures you will have seen. Wow, maybe we should have an auto eye, so let's... Uh... Okay, <laughs> that's better, isn't it? It's getting darker, that's what's happening. So I am super pleased with this. This is gorgeous. The chart, the yarn, the color. The... And Woolmeister's Merinos have a way of holding up really well. So despite wearing this for all of wool in Dublin, this is the amount of pilling that I had left from that. Can you even see any? So this is the legend that is Woolmeister. They, they really know their Merino. They don't obviously make the yarn, but they seem to have an exclusive supply, which I'm really pleased with. But I realised once I was up to the underarm, knitting that all by hand, that I wasn't going to finish unless I hook it onto my machine and do uh, basically this little section from the underarm to the shoulders on the machine. Uh, you really can't tell. There isn't any clear transition where the machine... Um, yeah, where the hand knitting end of the machine started. I even managed to do the short rows on the machine because knitting machines can do German short rows. My favourite short rows. So that worked out really well and then I just hooked it off and I did uh, I think three needle binder for each shoulder. Picked up for the neckline and knitted that and did the sleeves by hand. Uh, with, I don't know if this was the pattern, I did a moss stitch cuff. I don't think that was the pattern. You know what, moss stitch cuffs are underestimated. I think they are really nice and comfortable to wear. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna vouch for a bit of a mustache here. Uh, I should really wear this more. Uh, problem is it's a very long sweater. I did not predict it will be this long. Of course I managed to take one of the very few cropped sweaters out there and do it longer. Uh, so that was a bit of a, a bit weird given I always wear skirts. So it does look nicer with tights. I just feel like my bum is naked when I wear leggings and stuff. So. so. Yeah, so it's it's just hard to style with my wardrobe mostly. I did wear it in Dublin over skirts and it did look really nice. I'm just being fussy. And last, Winterfjell. My first design. I didn't think it would be a big deal. I wasn't gonna go with like my best idea right away. So I just like, I bought this yarn on sale while visiting my aunt and uncle right after Bergen Knitting Festival. The first time around I went there. And I just saw this yarn in the sales bin and as I came back to their place, I just opened Excel and I started putting some stuff together. I didn't think it was going to be like a big deal and I just started knitting it and it's 
I don't know if you know, but it's one of the most popular colorwork yolks on Ravelry. It is on the first page and I'm just, wow, yeah. So that's a thing that I never foresaw. Uh, not gonna be able to repeat that success, but I am nonetheless very proud of it. Winterfell out of PT2, technically discontinued, but basically the same as Fienul. Um, I will say Fienul is softer. This yarn is not that soft. Fienul, the way it is today, would be a much softer option than this yarn. But on the plus side, PT2 held up beautifully well. There is hardly any wear on this. So that's kind of been a bit of a trade-off with Fienul after they softened it up by including more lamb's wool. It's actually that Fienul pills more than it did before. Um, pros and cons to things, you know, soft will lead to more pilling, but it will also be more wearable. So yeah so yeah hope you enjoy that that's what's in my sweater pile so yeah not all sweaters but stuff that's desperately needing a place to be stored and i don't know what to do about that until i have a bigger place so i hope you enjoyed this video it's a little bit chop 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 but at least i managed to cram in everything within the hour so i'm pretty pleased with that and yeah Hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye.